You just gonna stand there, buddy? Can you come over here, please? Oh my god, can you move away from the ladder, sir? <laughs> Talk about a more annoying video game enemy! <laughs> MOVE YOUR ASS, YOU DICK! <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs>that's okay we had it coming I knew w eventually one of those guys would get us like that oh he's just walking through the wall oh my god oh my god oh we killed him wait he can walk through walls welcome back to another episode of let's play thousand one games I'm your host gaming Jay and after the utter catastrophe that was Beetlejuice on the NES I think it is time to redeem ourselves with a good Halloween game on the NES uh, this is Ghosts and Goblins. Um, we're gonna be checking this out on the NES, and then also, um, I think I will at least check out the arcade version, although I also have the Commodore 64 version, so it might be kind of fun to check out the few versions that we've got here. Uh, oddly enough, on the title screen, you can select one player, two player, or nothing. I don't know what that does. Uh, I don't know what I just selected, in fact, but I'm just gonna go ahead and reset for a second here. We're gonna start on, uh, one player. So, Ghosts and Goblins, classic, classic NES game. The Angry Video Nerd covered it. Uh, <laughs> here's Arthur in the nude, hanging out in the graveyard with his girlfriend. What were they up to? And then she gets kidnapped by the devil. It's a metaphor, guys, for not having sex. All the classic horror movies did it. Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street. It was always when teens decided to get busy. That's when Satan or Jason or Freddy or whomever showed up. Decided to crush him. So, uh, if you want to survive in a horror movie or a horror, horror video game, as uh, Jamie Kennedy said in Scream, you gotta be a virgin. So, this guy having gotten laid in the graveyard, bad news bears all over it. Um, here's a map of the world that we will be encountering here today. Now, I died already. Uh, Ghosts and Goblins here is renowned for being a brutal game. Um, I actually, I've already played on my channel, um, the second game. Oh, good, look, we have, uh, torches now. It's actually pretty, not a bad weapon. Um, the second game in this franchise that came out for the Super Nintendo was Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Which is kind of weird, because this is Ghosts and Goblins, but it became Super Ghouls and Ghosts. So I don't know what happened to the Goblins, but I guess they weren't series, uh, sequel worthy. But in any event, um, I... You know, Super Super Ghouls and Ghosts is a very tough game, but it is a game that I got good at over the years because I happened to own it, and it's a game that I actually have a lot of fondness for, and I can almost always beat it. It's very tough and challenging, and I might have to use some continues and stuff. We got the dagger, which is one of the best weapons in the game. Oh my god, it's a devil. Oh god, oh what the hell? How many hits does he take? Fun fact, that devil has his own video games, um, where you can, like, fly around and you can be him. You get to be the jerk, the dick devil guy. Um, but he was always, uh, he was always very frustrating every time you fought against him in every, uh, Ghosts and Goblins or Super Ghouls and Ghosts game. Uh, but yeah, I really love the Super Nintendo version of this game. Despite it being brutal, I feel like this version is harder. But I'm gonna refrain judgment until we get the hang of this a bit. Because, frankly, a lot of these old NES games are really brutal until you get the hang of them. And then once you sort of start to figure out some of their tricks, figure out how you're supposed to be playing them, the difficulty gets a little more manageable, typically. Not saying they become easy games, but things just become a little more manageable. And I, I think... Oh, God, thank God we didn't select that. Oh, no! Get up there! Oh, what the hell? When you're, when you're standing up against this thing, holding forward and jumping... Oh, no! Oh, my God. Oh no, we got the thing! I was trying to show you guys, I was holding forward and jumping, and he was just jumping literally straight up. And then trying to demonstrate it to you, I got the crappy lance back. So, we screwed up. Oh, there it is! That option down there is continue. That's what the third option is. I wonder why they leave it even if you haven't started. It's like, they just got so lazy programming, they didn't even want to put an extra if statement into their title screen to check if there is nothing to continue. And they were like, whatever. Just, uh, let them always continue, the little brats. They're lucky to get a video game at all. Um, I'm curious to see what this game was like in the arcades. 
frankly, and that's why I queued up the arcade version of this. Because I would say this game is up there with Contra as, like, one game that's, like, really classic, but known as a challenging game. I mean, I think Contra is a more classic game. But back uh, not too long ago, we tried Contra, the arcade game, for the first time ever, really. I mean, I had played it on the NES. I grew up playing it on the NES. Played it, you know, thousands of times, really. Love Contra. But, uh, I don't... Oh, you dick. Jeez. I don't think I had ever played it on the arcade, and it was actually a very different game. It was actually far worse on the arcade, I think, than it was on the NES. Uh, but I think this this is an example of a game where the opposite might be true, where this game is, like, pretty rough on the NES. Oh my god, what is happening? But it might be, uh, might be okay on the arcades. Can I kill these guys? Nope. Oh my god. Okay, so those guys have shields, but you can shoot them in the back. Once they've passed you, they mean you no harm and they won't hurt you, but you can just shoot them in the back to be a dick. Oh my god, ghosts! Forest ghosts! What is this thing? What did I just get? By the way, do I ever get armor back, or is it just like an underwear game at this point? Is it sort of like, once your armor... <laughs> once your armor bursts off your torso, you don't get that back. Whoever this guy is buying his armor from, he really... He really ought to, uh, you know... Oh my god, get a refund. Seriously? Like, I'm pretty sure when... When... Somebody touches you when you're wearing armor, it's not supposed to explode off of you. <laughs> Call me crazy. But it's supposed to be more stable than that, so I think old Arthur here is getting, uh, getting a little screwed. Screwed by the man, the armor selling man. Armo. Because in medieval times, everyone was named after their occupation, you know. Smith, the last name Smith, comes from blacksmith. Um... Various other things, other names, and Armo is for people who used to make armor. That was their first names. Armor, Armo the armor selling guy in town. Oh my, oh my god. Okay. Well, we got one more shot to get through this. So originally I was like, oh, I'll play this on NES, and then when I get far enough that I can't get any further, I'll try the arcade. I didn't want to start with the arcade because with arcade games, you can basically credit feed typically, and so just continue to put in quarters. Oh my god! <laughs> until until you pass the level, but now I'm like, maybe we have to credit feed. I can't get anywhere on my own. Okay, we'll try one more time. I like how we can continue on level one. As if somehow we've achieved something and we don't want to give up our progress. I mean, the oh, we do have a checkpoint. Oh, that's something. I was going to say, the only thing we've achieved, you can achieve, is getting a different weapon. But I guess it even tracks checkpoints, so... Okay, the, the continue feature isn't totally useless. I'm eating my own words. Okay, let's get past these guys. Boom. Alright. What I wouldn't give for a dagger or a weapon or something. They're really stingy with... Like, not for, forget about uh, they don't want to give you uh, armor. They really don't want to give you weapons. Although I guess I've seen more weapons than armor, but I mean, like, in this forest, this magical forest of ghosts... Like, I'm getting nothing. I'm getting hit. That's what I'm getting. Oh my- Oh my god! I think the same ghost got me twice. It's like brutal to make any progress. So the one saving grace of this game is infinite continues. And I honestly feel like back in the day that would have been enough for me. Like, I could- I could imagine sitting around with my bro. Like just- Oh my god. Playing- for hours and hours and hours, you know, 40 minutes, 2 hours per level trying to get through these levels. But because you have infinite continues, you know that eventually you'll pass the game. It's not a matter of if, just a matter of how much do you want to suffer in life, mostly. Which I guess is like the MO of every Nintendo game. Nintendo games were never really that long. I mean, some of them did get quite long. Actually, even early ones like Legend of Zelda are very long, but... Um, it's more common for NES games to be a little short. And so... Oh, wait, what?! I didn't even realize he could shoot fireballs. Um, anyway, NES games are pretty short, so usually beating them is just a matter of how much of your life do you want to sacrifice. How much time you want to give up to the NES man. Okay. If I can get to the boss with, like, my armor so I can take a hit, <laughs> that would be nice. 
Like, like, why did they make this game so unforgiving? It's brutal. I know in, uh, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, like, you definitely can lose your armor and get hit, and it is hard. But, I mean, they give you opportunities to get your armor back if you took a hit. It's not just like you make a mistake and that's it, you're done for. Also, why am I getting no opportunities for weapons here? I want some weapons, yo. Get out of here, ghosty. Bustin' makes me feel good, and I will bust you up. Come on, buddy. You want some? Oh my god, he didn't even shoot at me! What the hell?! <laughs> oh, the developer's like, well, if you make it to him with armor, he's a pushover. And right, we've beaten A level. So it's- it's possible. If this- let me tell you, if this schmuck can beat a level in, in Ghosts and Goblins, any- any- anybody can. Alright, now we are in Ice Castle land. I remember these guys. So these are all the enemies that I- pff, you bastards. That I remember from, uh, the Super Nintendo version, but they're all just like... You know, 8-bit, I guess. Oh my god, okay, I'm just running for it. Why would you not do this? Oh my god! Shoot that guy. Alright, we made it. That's not bad. Is there anything in this level? There's some birds. Ravens. Empty buildings. Oh my god, what- what is these?! What were those? Game over. Okay, let's try one more continue on this new level here. Try and explore it a little bit. Continue. Alright. I think I got a little further in that, that level. So, <laughs> one, one pro tip here is just run as fast as you can and try and get to checkpoints because... Really, the only- the only enemy you have to, like, actually face and survive is the final boss of every level. So, oh my god, ow! It's- it's a bunch of new trolls! What the- what am I fighting? Oh my god, and they're barfing on me. A bunch of new dudes hanging out and they're being rude! Alright, new dudes. You're going down! Oh my god, die! Oh my god, that guy got really close to actually killing me. Oh my god, a bird! What? What is happening here? This guy just like hang around. Okay, there he goes. And be like, is he just gonna camp the stairs? Die, dude! There we go. Why do they keep looking down? Are they. These guys are not feeling well. Oh god! They run at you. Okay, that is actually kind of tricky. We gotta get through a maze of semi-nude and nude trolls. Oh my god, and they- <laughs> you, you also can't adjust your movement once you start jumping. So if you- you start a level into a jump into a raven like I did stupidly, you're just done. So that kind of sucks. Alright, let's just try going to the right here and, uh, let's see. I'm gonna fight as few of these nude guys as I need to. I have no idea how to get a new weapon. I feel like on the first level we got a couple of different weapons and now it's all just dried up. They're just like, forget it. You don't get any more weapons. You just gonna stand there, buddy? Can you come over here, please? Oh my god, can you move away from the ladder, sir? <laughs> I'm over here, man! Jeez, oh my god, talk about a more annoying video game enemy! <laughs> Move your ass, you dick! What the hell is this? This is so stupid! How are you supposed to do this? Am I supposed to kill him through the wall here? Isn't he just gonna respawn? Alright, let's do it this way. Oh my god! I'm dead. Okay, we're gonna- we're gonna try one more time, we're gonna kill that guy ahead of time. I feel like... Some games are hard. I've played many, many hard games in my time, and... Some of my favorite games are quite challenging. But what... What I think every video game player despises... Is like... Stupid, unfair stuff. Like- like that enemy. It's fine if you want to have an enemy walking back and forth, even if he's like blocking the ladder. But have him move! Don't have him just stand there and obstruct you endlessly. That's not fun. 
That's just sort of like a big dick move. Oh my god! And he can throw stuff through walls. Well, I guess I can shoot through walls. It's really tit for tat. Damn it. Okay, we gotta try again. I gotta just see if I can get past these nudies. These nudos. Oh my god, I went to select one player. Okay, well... <laughs> we did, we can pass level 2 on the NES. I say, let's try our luck on the arcade version, and then we'll take a peek at the Commodore version at the end. Alright, here we are, Ghosts and Goblins. I, I will say that the arcade version here actually looks quite a bit like the Super Nintendo Super Ghouls and Ghosts that I grew up with. Um, he has a really funny running animation, though. <laughs> Looks like he is, uh, really being encumbered by his armor there. So will start out in the cemetery. The devil appears. Takes my girlfriend, and off I go, running like- <laughs> Look at this running animation! <laughs> this is hilarious. Alright, we got an evil coin. I'll take it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Look, a, a weapon! <laughs> they actually gave me a weapon. Oh man! You know, I remember the, uh, torch from Super Ghouls and Ghosts kind of sucking, but, like, this thing seems... Oh my god, nice try. This thing seems pretty good. I mean, he whips it across the screen, like, hard. Like, it goes really far, actually. Boom, boom. I kind of like it, to be honest. It has a bit of an arc to it. Ooh, a necklace. Don't mind if I do, zombies. I don't know if that was, like, a zombie tre treasure, or it was, like... You know, the person who died owned a necklace, and when they got turned into a zombie, I killed them and just stole their ju their family jewelry. Could be that. Boom, boom. Ah, oh, this torch is great. So we have the dagger, we have the lance. Oh god, not the lance, thanks. We have the torch. I'm trying to think of, like, what other weapons are in this game that I know of. You know the, uh... <laughs> yeah, you can, like, stand the ladder and show your butt off. That's pretty funny. You can do that in the Super Nintendo version, too. Did it a lot. Um, the first Ghouls and Ghosts or Ghosts and Goblins or whatever game that I ever played was actually the Sega Genesis version, believe it or not. And that is a version that I have not gone back to over the years, but I do re clearly remember one specific level. And, oh, you dick. Come on. Ah, oh, yes, we got him. Oof. I do remember one specific level, which is you were standing on top of a giant bug, and there were, like, weak spots on the bug, and it were, they were, like, spawning grubs or something, and you could jump and press down and, like, throw your dagger directly below you. And I remember you kind of had to do that in order to, um... in order to pass the level. So, I feel like I should look that up. I should go back and play the, uh, Sega Genesis version of Ghouls and Ghosts or Ghosts and Goblins or whatever... Whatever game you call it. Because I do remember enjoying that one, too. And then... Oh, God. The next time I saw the franchise, it was the Super Nintendo version. Alright. Bye-bye, ghosts. I want to know if I can, like... I was wondering if I put fire on the ground and those guys walked into it, if it would kill them. Because it would, like, go behind their shields, but it doesn't look like it did. Nice try! Oh, you dicks! One of the things that is has always been hard about uh, the Ghosts and Goblins or Ghouls and Ghosts franchise is that once you jump, you... Shit. Uh, once you jump, you cannot control your momentum. So once you jump, whatever's happening to you is what's happening. Oh, wait, is that it? Do I get to, do I get any continues? Wait. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say. Are we just back to the beginning? Because if so, that's the most hardcore arcade game I've ever played. It's more hardcore than the NES game. Um, but yeah, once you jump, it's like you're kind of committed. Like, whatever you've decided to do, you're in on it. And I feel like that... That is, like, one... It's one of the most iconic things about the, the Ghosts and Goblins franchise, but I will say it's one of the most annoying as well. Because typically it means, like, if you don't know what's coming up, if you don't know what enemies are coming up, if somebody catches you off guard, you can just be totally screwed. Um, 
And it, it like adds a level of difficulty that I that feels very Oh my god, unforgivingly intense. So I have to concentrate here with all these ghosts. This is insane. Okay, let's see if we can kill this guy. Oh god. Hey, I ducked under that fireball. Boom. Come on, you dick. Ah, I don't know how to avoid that. Oh, we got him though. Man, that was so much easier than the uh, than the NES version. Oh, and armor just appears on him. I feel like he might have some structural damage to the legs of his bones because he does not run like a normal person. Oh my God, why can't I shoot again? There we go. Hey, I got an extra life. That's something. Boom, I'm just gonna run, man. Worked on the NES, it's gonna work here. <sighs> Holy, oh my god, I can't believe I made that jump. What? I thought I was dead for sure. Okay, birds or something come out of here. Oh my god, little gremlin trolls. Die. Jesus, that's brutal. Maybe my weapon isn't so great after all. I've, I, I kind of liked how powerful it was, but maybe I should, uh... It's something other than, uh, torches here. Something other than, uh, medieval Molotov cocktails. Oh my god, I can't even get past this part. Oh, they're gonna barf on me. Oh my god, now they have, like, heart tattoos. <laughs> At least I can tell that they're in a Speedo, though. These are, like, biker trolls. Oh my god. Walking around with big heart tattoos on their arms. His like mom underneath, you know, like the the sort of prototypical uh, sleazy tattoo, the heart that says mom. When did that become the prototypical sleazy tattoo? By the way, were there a lot of scumbags who really liked their mothers? Like, how did that, how did A lead to B in that scenario? Very confusing. All right, we're having trouble getting past these gobos. Jeez. Oh god. Oh. God, I'm, I'm, uh, I was gonna say I'm contemplating getting the lance, but before I could even pick it up, I straight up died. Jeez, we're getting less far in this <laughs> than the NES version, and the NES version was brutal, man. Although I'm not surprised, I mean, arcade games were hard back in the day, they were trying to get your money, but this is really hard. Makes me think that if we now try the Commodore game, we're not even gonna get past the first level. It's like every game, every version of this we try, gets harder and harder! Oh god, we almost fell in the water. At least we survived that. Down you go! Okay. I'm gonna try going up here. Killing this guy. Oh my god, I'm just dead! <laughs> There's no way to survive that! This is ridiculous! Who built this? What sadistic madman made this game? You know, I came into this knowing this was gonna be a hard game today, but I was- I guess I was cocky. I was like, yeah, yeah, but I play- I play super ghouls and ghosts. Ghosts and goblins? I got this. This is brutal, man. Can't even get past this house here. Oh my god. They just get you right away. Like, what are you supposed to do there? What are you supposed to do? It's not even like a question of like, oh, Jay, you know, you're jumping too early, man. It's like, what are you legitimately supposed to do there? We'll give this one or two more tries, but then we're onto the Commodore version. And then it's another Beetlejuice scenario, man. We're just done. Just can't get any further. Turns out NES games are kicking my butt right now. Okay. Go. 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 All right, we just sort of took our time and that worked. Oh, we gotta kill this guy. Oh, get out of here, dude. Oh, jeez. The one thing I don't like about the fire is it, it's sometimes you can't throw an item because you just threw one. Run. Okay, kill this guy. Oh, God, no. Oh, so close. Okay, we're getting far, man. We have not been this far before. Okay, we got that. Is there a guy over here? We should kill this guy if there is. Okay, I don't see a guy. We only have like a minute and 43 left. <laughs> okay, kill this guy. Oh God! Every time I think he's about to get me, 
Somehow it works out for me. Okay, screw these devil coins. We're just in it to survive, man. Hey, get over here, buddy. Put on some pants, why don't you? God, we you have company over. Okay, I'm totally taking a hit here. I know it. Oh, God. Oh, my God, we made it past the building. All right, it's possible, man. Possible. I don't trust these. You dicks. I would have to do that again. Whoever programmed this game is an a-hole. Oh my god. All right, we'll take our time, nice and slow. Nobody needs to be a hero today. Okay, then we kill this guy. Okay, and then... I think we just run for it. Then we kill this guy. Ah, oh, you dick. That's okay. We had it coming. I knew w eventually one of those guys would get us like that. Oh, he's just walking through the wall. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, we killed him. Wait, he can walk through walls? What? I've I've seen and I've no I've seen things where like the player can't shoot through walls but enemies can and you think that's unfair? How about enemies that can like move through the walls? And you can't. That's insane. Okay, kill, kill. You know, give me a weapon. I'm done with this weapon that I've got. Let's hang out. Okay, new plan. We're gonna hang out near the house for a little bit. Kill as many of these flying devils as we can. Get a different weapon and then try one more time to pass this level. Either we'll get a weapon or we won't. And... We'll either pass the level or we I mean, these are just the realities of... Oh, hello! Yes! Ooh, chops right through him. Okay. I'm... Took a lot of hits there, but still. Ooh. I do kind of like that. The fact that it goes through the enemies. Okay. Nope. Nope! Come over here, man. You want to barf on me? You want to barf on somebody? Barf on this! You're dead, man! You're effing dead! Die! Jesus. You think you could have had the enemies take just a few less hits? Oh, you bastard. Like, as soon as they see you, they run at you. They barf on you from above and throw things at you from below, and they can run through walls. Is there anything else you'd like to let those random enemies do? Like, they're not a boss, right? Oh my god. <laughs> and you only get two hits. But once you take a hit, man, you are effed. Oh, get out of here. Oh and, you only, oh, and you only have two minutes to do this all. You only have a two-minute time limit. So there you go. Like, how about, how about three hits? Three is a good number. Oh my god. Okay, forget it. Kill you. You're gonna barf on me. You're gonna... Ugh! <laughs> Ridiculous! All right, the next death I think is is it, man. I can't I can't take this. This is brutal, brutal. You know though, I will say this is a better better game than Beetlejuice. So, ooh, the dagger. Okay, game changer. All right, maybe we will try a few more lives now that we have the dagger. Get out of here, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Um, so we've been playing spooky games because October or Halloween's right around the corner, um, and this is yet another spooky game in our our uh, our month of October. And we tried to play Beetlejuice this past weekend, and it did not go well. Um, oh my god, I'd never played Beetlejuice, so I wasn't sure what to expect. Let me tell you, it it sucks. It is a terrible game. <laughs> I don't know why it was ever made. But it shouldn't have been. It's and, and the sad thing is, like, Beetlejuice is like a beloved franchise. You 100% son of a bitch. Oh, I can't believe I survived. You 100% could do a lot with Beetlejuice. And you could do... And it's like you have a built-in audience for it. Like, people who love Beetlejuice are going to want to play the game. So it's like, I'm certain you could have done something good with Beetlejuice. I mean, here's an idea. Just make, like, an action platformer with Beetlejuice. 
It doesn't, it, it doesn't even have to, like, in the game, it was like you had to buy scares, and you had to squash bugs and stuff. And it was like, it was an action platformer, but it was just a really crappy one. Just make a literal, decent game, and you sell millions of copies. Because it's Beetlejuice, man. Everyone loves Beetlejuice. Son of a- oh god, I can't believe I survived! And I'm gonna die to a bird. No, I'm not. Wow, the dagger really makes a difference. Okay, come on, you. Get over here. Oh, he's just walking through the wall. Okay. I'll take that, too. Oh, nice try. See ya! Okay. I know what happens here. You do this. 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 Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm trying to be very cautious here. Oh, God. Okay. Nobody has to take any risks here. We only have 45 seconds left. That's okay, as long as I get to the next checkpoint, that's the key thing! Holy sh- what the hell happened there? Yeah, I gotta jump on this. My heart is like, beating a mile a minute, guys. Okay, we got this. Go. 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 I'm not even jumping on these platforms, I'm just like straight dead dropping. Cause like, I don't trust, uh, we have 20 seconds left. I just gotta get to that ledge, I'm sure that ledge over there is a checkpoint. Go! I think we made it to a checkpoint. I think we're good. I think we're good, yes. Oh my god! It's the boss. Two of them?! What?! No, no human could do this! Oh my god. Wait, what?! There's no checkpoint?! Are you kidding me?! Oh my god! What kind of inhuman monster is this game Does Ah! Oh, who designed this?! Holy shit! Oh my god. Alright, well... We'll be dead in a second, and then we can uh, try the Commodore 64 version, damn. Like, as hard as this is, again, it's better than Beetlejuice, because at least this is, like, a game. Like, the, the difficulty is way too hard. They really should make enemies take less damage, spawn a bit less often, give you some health. And if you just did those basic things, this game would be way more playable. Um, but because they just decided to, like, you know, go insane when they made this game, it's brutal. But again, still better than Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice is just, like, obscure and- Oh, you can jump over those guys?! Okay, whatever. Oh, sh shit. Game over, son. You failed. I have never tried so hard in a video game and gotten... made such little progress. It's like, it's just unbelievable. Do we even place on the high scoreboard? Is it even gonna show us? Continue to play. We're gonna let this time out. I wanna see how I... I wanna see where I, I, I landed on the high scoreboard. Let us see. So here's your extra lives. Posit one coin to play. And Jay's number two! Sweet. Well, we we almost made it to the top of the high scoreboard. That's something, I guess. Man, even the computer sucks. Look! The computer, <laughs> within two seconds of playing, has lost its armor. How far does the computer get? I'm curious to see. Oh, it just stops. Okay. Well, good to know that even the AI has uh, trouble with this. Alright, let's go ahead and check out the Commodore 64 version, then we will wrap up our thoughts on Ghosts and Goblins. Ah, uh, yes! Don't you just love... I just love random, annoying computer sounds when you start up your video game system. Beautiful. Now we get to stare at the dark void, wondering if Commodore is actually loading something. I feel like Commodore is like such an interesting like old system. It's like games took forever to load. While they were loading, your computer would like seizure out with random colors all over the place and random noises. And it felt like like loading a game felt like painful for the computer. It didn't feel like something the computer wanted to be doing. You know, it felt like it was actively fighting not to have it happen. 
Um, and it would take forever. It would take like 10 minutes. Uh, like this is a tape-based game, right? So it's playing off a cassette tape. It like takes effing forever. And then eventually you get to a screen like this. So at least you know the game is loading at this point. But again, I don't know why... Uh, why why does every Commodore game load with just a, a random string, random vibrating list of colors? And they're not even like nice colors that belong together. It's like pink and black and white and green next to brown. You know, like these are... It's it's not like a rainbow. You could have done this nice where it's like a, a cascading, uh, you know, palette that fades from red to green to yellow to blue or something. And it pulses. Like you can make this way more interesting, but... Anyway, there's that nude goblin with the heart tattoo. I guess that's a real thing. He's like in a speedo. What? What is that thing? I mean, I, I like to think that in the original Japanese release, he was totally naked and they had like a fully animated like troll penis. And they were like, well, bringing it to the West, we got to throw a speedo on that guy. The penis demon needs a speedo. Because people in the West are too sensitive. It's never going to fly, you know? But in Japan, there's no sensor in that kind of stuff. Oh my god, this is going to take forever. Okay, I'm now going to speed the game up. It's running at, at a normal Commodore speed. I'm going to speed it up to unlimited speed capacity, and let's see how long it takes to load this. Okay, it's now operating as fast as a modern computer possibly can. Oh, we're making some progress, finally. This would have taken like 10 minutes if I hadn't have done this. <laughs> and look how fast the game's running now. Okay, back to 100%. We're back into normal speed mode. And we got our glorious Ghosts and Goblins intro. Um, oh, and I have to set up my controller here. Fun fact, this is one of the games you have to play through controller port 2. A lot of Commodore games required that you use the second controller port in order to uh, actually play games. If you plug your controller into port number one, it won't do anything. And uh, I learned that, I think when I got a thousand subscribers, I played the Great Gianna Sisters on Commodore. It was a game I always remember playing as a kid and I always wanted to come back to it and I was saving it. And I did it live and I was having a lot of trouble getting the game started and then somebody watching mentioned that uh that you know that's how um that's how you have to do uh commodore uh goes wow in some ways this is like way easier maybe we'll actually get far in the commodore version well, that was kind of a scary jump actually Ugh. so you jump with up which i do not like but oh you i <laughs> i made that jump and then he just fell off wait what the devil responds no Go away. I feel like the devil is easier in this because they, they couldn't actually program all of its evil logic. Like the com the fact that the Commodore was limited in how sophisticated a game it could make actually helps the player for ghosts and goblins. Oh my god, wow. I was sort of getting through that. Jeez, did these guys ever stop? Jesus. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, there's the boss, though. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, but up being jump is, uh, I'm not a fan of that, but oddly enough, this is not too bad. Oh, my God. Get rid of the ghosts, please. Do the ghosts have to be here for this? Oh, my God. Okay, I, I should walk under that guy when he jumps. That's the mechanic we got to work with here. Can I shoot these guys? There we go. Oh god, I keep jumping when I don't mean to. Oh god. Oh my god. <laughs> How are you supposed to avoid this guy? Oh, we got him! Oh my god. This game is way easier! <laughs> oh, it just goes right into the next level. You don't get an overhead map or anything. Huh. Oh god. Oh god. Oh my god. Okay, we just gotta get to the checkpoint! <laughs> Alright. 
I have hoped that we will actually get farther in this than we did in either of the other two versions, though, oddly enough. Jesus, although those spawning devil guys are really difficult. Oh, that's it? No continues? Oh, never mind. We're, <laughs> we're not seeing past level two, wow. In fact, I don't even know if we can get a different weapon. Be nice to. Oh my god. They just spawn enemies all over the place. Well, Ghosts and Goblins here is one of the games in the book, a thousand video games you must play before you die. I personally am mixed on this one. I think Ghosts and Goblins is definitely iconic enough that it does make sense to recommend it. So I, I, I do agree with the book in some sense in including this. But I also kind of think that this... I don't know how this holds up anymore. Like, I even liked Super Ghouls and Ghosts, and I feel like this is just too hard. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm being a wussy about it. Uh, I'd be curious to hear about people who, for whom this is a cherished game and who grew up playing it. Uh, if they still like playing it, if they find that the difficulty hasn't aged all that well, or it is it is also possible to like something but recognize that like, oh good, there we go. We got a different weapon. Um, it is possible to like something but also recognize that it's not for the masses and that most people aren't going to enjoy it. Um, like, personally, and this is my own bias because I know the Super Nintendo version, I would recommend that over this. I think the Super Nintendo version took what the original game was trying to be. It, uh, you know, had brought arcade-level graphics to the game. And it also, uh, made the game more playable, oddly enough. I mean, people think of Super Ghouls and Ghosts as one of the hardest Super Nintendo games. And it's hard, don't get me wrong. But compare it to this, it's like, you know... Like, you guys don't know what hard is. You're born on the NES. You don't know. Anyway. Um, yeah, so I don't know. What do you guys think? Is it a game that should be played? Should you play one of its sequels or the Super Nintendo version even? Like, I would recommend. Or do you have another opinion? Let me know in the comments down below. And, uh, you know, we will be back soon with yet another game from the 1001 book. And another spooky game at that as we finish out the month the sacred, spooky, scary month of uh, October. So I hope you guys have been enjoying all the spectacular games. And uh, I'm interested to hear what you guys think of this one. Other than that, I will catch you in the next one. So until next time, my friends, y'all take care of yourselves. And peace. Whoever programmed this game is an a-hole.